What up, Pittsburgh Steel fans and NFL fans? Because we're talking NFL draft prospects at the Senior Bowl. Today's show, we are going to get into 13 guys across linebackers, running backs, quarterbacks, a punter, tight ends, and even a couple of wide receivers that I'm interested in watching at the Senior Bowl over the course of the days leading up into the actual game and, of course, in the game itself. Guys, it could be genuine Steelers draft prospects. and Obviously, they're draft prospects for any team if you go for another team outside the Steelers in this year's NFL draft. All right, we're going to focus a lot on linebackers because we know the Steelers have got a need there. Five of my 13 guys are linebackers. Let's crack into it. Well, we're going to kick off with Jalen Ford out of Tech. Actually, no. We're going to, yeah, we're going to give off Jalen Ford out of Texas, six foot two, 220 pounds. I've also seen stats that have him more like 240 pound. Um, look, really, really uh, explosive player, a guy that shows on film, a guy that shows on tape. Only three sacks in his college career, but the tackles and the tackles for a loss are what we really need to focus on as a linebacker. He's got 287 total tackles from his four-year college career. That's pretty significant. Um, 27 and a half of those for a loss. Six interceptions as well, four in 2022, uh, two in 2023. Pretty incredible guy. Four force fumbles as well. Plays on a really important defense. This guy, Jalen Ford, through the if he has a really good draft um, process in terms of starting this week at the Senior Bowl, moving into the, the combine, moving into his pro days, I think this guy is a first three-round pick, maybe even solidifies himself as a second-round pick. Definitely someone to watch. And no, not just because I'm a Texas Longhorns fan. He's definitely going to be an explosive guy. I'm really keen to see him work and prove that he can play not just, I think he's great and ready to go for a 4-3 defense, but can he play a 3-4 defense? That's what I want to see out of him through his draft process, kicking off at the combine. The next guy on my list is to watch is Tommy Eichenberg out of Ohio State, the Ohio State. They've got him at six foot two, 235 pounds. Now, he's an interesting guy as well. Played a stack of games, 268 total tackles, so more than even Jalen Ford. Again, three and a half sacks, so a little bit different from the three sacks that you've got there with Jalen Ford, um, but pretty similar numbers from that perspective. Only two interceptions. They were split between 2021 and 2022. Only one forced fumble. Look, he's a guy that, like, going into this college season, people had as could he be a second or a third rounder. I think we're looking at the middle to back end of the third, maybe early fourth. Um, it but he needs to have a good testing and combine process. That is why I think an, an on-field performance against the best of the best at the Senior Bowl is a key reason why Tommy Eichenberg is there. But also, if the Steelers prioritize different positions, then maybe they look for the pedigree that um, and, and, and the performance out of Tommy Eichenberg at Ohio State, and then they can weigh that against the potential. Another guy on my list is a, another inside linebacker, in Cedric Gray out of North Carolina. Now, he's someone, I'll be honest, I I wasn't deeply attuned to him uh, since uh, throughout the course of college, NFL college season, sorry, in course of the American football college season. Um, but I, he's someone that's come up as I've looked through different mock drafts and different draft profiles and, and particularly started to investigate the linebackers. He's a guy that kind of since mid-December, late December has been coming up on my radar, someone I've really tried to focus in on a bit in January. This guy's got five interceptions in his career. He's had four years, four seasons at North Carolina, 368 total tackles. So we talk about production. That is insane production. 29 tackles for a loss, eight and a half sacks. This five interceptions, five false fumbles. This guy will be a steal at the top of the third. Steal at the top of the third. And don't be surprised to see him drafted before that, particularly if the Steelers do feel like they like him through testing. So watch out for Cedric Gray at the senior bowl. This guy could be an incredible pickup. Um, if you can get him later than the third round or in the third round or later. Um, so definitely a guy I'm keen to see at the senior bowl. He needs a big senior bowl to prove his head of, you know, potential and pedigree um, and worthiness of it as a top three round pick, but definitely a guy to watch Cedric Gray out of North Carolina. All right. Then we move on to Tyrese Knight. Now he's out of the university, of Texas, El Paso. Um, again, a guy that like I started to see, I wanted to look at some of the guys that are a bit more less familiar to people. 390 tackles for loss. So we're just ticking up the board for the linebackers right now. Eight and a half sacks as well for Tyrese Knight. Um, eight and a, so yeah, so eight and a half sacks, 32 tackle, 32 tackles for a loss. Crazy 16 pass defenses, two interceptions, four force fumbles. He's a guy that's about six foot two, 240 pounds. Let's see what he tests. I think he'll be a little bit lower than weight. You should just see because I think he looks sometimes a little bit taller on tape. We should just see if that's what he actually is. It's six foot two. But this is a guy 
that fifth, fourth, fifth round, depending on the sort of process he has, he could be an absolute steal again in this draft. Think about we got the Steelers got Nick Herbig last year. Could they back it up with an inside linebacker this year in the fourth round? It'll be interesting to see if Tyrese Knight can make himself worthy of a fourth round pick or beyond. Then our Peyton Wilson. Now he's out of North Carolina State, six foot four, two thirty five pound. Someone mentioned one of our listeners mentioned to him to me in the comments, or it was a live live chat in a live show I did with Shannon White um, as my co-host on the Steelers Global Perspective, which comes out, you know, sort of an American Friday through the weekend, depending on how we like to cut up the content that we do. Um, but yeah, Peyton Wilson is a name that's been, I've seen thrown in the mix in there by our live, live chat. That's why it alerted me to him. Um, definitely it was someone I'd seen on the linebacker rankings and all that sort of stuff, but wasn't necessarily a guy that I was fully keen to watch what his relevance was to the Steelers. But 15 sacks from that linebacker position, 48 tackles for loss, and a massive 402 tackles. Now, he has played five seasons of college football, so that's a lot more time to have production. Has only one forced fumble, has only 13 pass defenses, seven interceptions. This is a guy that has proven performance. Again, if you're looking for fifth, sixth round, I think he'll go higher than that. Again, he could, he could potentially be a third-round guy, depending on how he tests but Peyton Wilson is definitely one to watch at the Senior Bowl because this, this is the sort of guy, no labile of their own, and then they have a mass, they have massive splash plays. They have key stoppages. Um, they make key plays on third down. This is a guy where they make their money. This is sort of what happened with Chad Moomer um, a little bit at the Senior Bowl. Watch out for a massive week from Peyton Wilson. All right, now we get to the punter. We're, we're, we're ripping through these. We want to make sure it's a quick show, a tight show. Um, you can move on to other skills content on our channel. Um, but you've got Tory Taylor. Where's the number nine jersey? Six foot four, 230 pounds. I've seen another one that says he's six foot three, 225. So he's definitely a bigger guy for a punter. Now, he averaged over four. Like, he had, had a, an average of three out of his last five games over 50 yards. This is a guy, Ray Guy Award winner 2023, All-America Award as well. Um, averaged 46.3 yards in college, 48.2 this last year. So obviously Ray Guy Award is best punter um, in college football. So he had that. He's punted for over 13,500 yards with 13,657. He is only one of two punters that will be appearing at the Senior Bowl, according to the official list. And with that official list, that's kind of interesting from that perspective, but I do think I, I can't, wait, can't wait to see what his hang time is in, um, in the senior bowl. I can't wait to see how he goes, you know, kicking into sort of right before the end zone. Um, this will be an interesting thing for him. It's a big stage. We've seen kickers and punters mess up before. This is a guy that can earn himself a spot. It's not just an, an, like a six or seven round pick. Could he go beyond that? Um, the Steelers, I don't think necessarily want to invest a high pick in, but if he was available and he was a steal, don't be, don't be surprised to see them trade back into the draft. I don't think they're fully convinced on Harvin. This guy could be incredible. And with the Steelers playing low margin football, with the Steelers acquiring Arthur Smith in a, in, in a run game focused offense, punting the football becomes even more important, um, particularly if you get caught on a third and down from a penalty or a sack um, on offense. So look out for Tory Taylor at the senior ball. That guy's going to kick the crap out of that ball. All right, now I move on to two quarterbacks that I've got on this list. I know Mike Tomlin um, on Wednesday in America did a lot of talking with Bo Nix and that sort of stuff. But I'm I'm interested to see how Michael Pratt goes through the senior bowl week. 9,611 yards for him in college football. 90 TDs to 26 interceptions. Um, incredible. In terms of overall career percentage, at 60.6. But in his last year, this last year of college, he averaged 65.4%, so a bit better from that perspective. Um, Four-year um, four player there at Tulane. Um, there's other guys in the draft process that are from Tulane that are getting sort of some notoriety. So, look, he will be interesting to see where he goes. He's kind of fighting as like the – some people haven't ranked as high as the eighth. Some people have him as 10th or 11th best quarterback in this draft. Um, definitely a mid-round sort of guy. That's what I'm interested to see if he can perform. Can he do enough to make the Steelers want to take him in the first four rounds where I think he'll, he'll be picked um, at the back end of that fourth? Let's see. Um, when we'll, that kicks off at the Senior Bowl. All right, so now we have a guy that I thought probably was going to come out last year, but Sam Hartman from Notre Dame. He has played six years. Obviously, the COVID year of eligibility comes into play. So he would be as old I'm pretty sure he's as old as Kenny Pickett, six foot one. I think he's going to test more like 220, 
pounds, not like 208, 210. But he has 15,656 yards in college football. Now, remember Brock Purdy had a heap of yards. Um, we saw last year guys like Tyler Badgett. We've seen Bailey Zappi before. A heap of ton of yardage has translated to the NFL. Um, 134 TDs, 249 interceptions. This guy, that's unfortunately been just under a ratio of three to one, but pretty exceptional. He had 39 TDs in 2021 with Wake Forest, 38 in 2022, just 24 at Notre Dame this year, but he had that 24 to eight um, TD interception ratio, ratio, so three to one. It was slightly ahead of that three to one in 2022. Um, and again, it was just below three to one in 2021. So definitely a guy that you know has a quite a favorable rate there. Wasn't a great year for him pass yards wise, but it wasn't really a great year for Notre Dame football either. Um, whereas Wake Forest, he got them into a bowl game for the first time in years um, in I think it was 2021, not 2022. Uh, but definitely a guy that I've always been a real. He's been a favorite of mine. I wanted him when he went. I, we thought we, he was going to declare in the draft process last year, back when, when I was doing content with um, Steel Curtain Network. I wanted the Steelers to draft him in the fifth or sixth round. We shouldn't see where he falls, but that'll all happen through the testing process. And he needs to have a big senior ball and he needs to have a particularly big combine if he wants to be a top five round drafted player. But I do think his guy, if you stick him on your roster, let him learn the offense, he could be a very capable number three, but definitely work himself into over time being a capable number two. All right, now we move on to the wide receivers. So we've ripped through linebackers, punters, and quarterbacks pretty quickly. So we've just got wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs to get through. We're only going to look at five uh, five more guys, including Jacob Cowing out of Arizona, who was formerly with the University of Texas, El Paso, who we, we had the player earlier there, and Tyrese Knight. Um, but yeah, we get into Jacob Cowing. Now, he's a guy with fourth, almost 4,500 receiving yards, an average of 14.2, pretty high. I remember, we saw George Pickens drafted with a high average like that. Um, obviously, a bit more pedigree um, coming from Georgia with George Pickens. But Jacob Cowling, 33 TDs, pretty incredible from that perspective over the course of his career. That's a lot of TDs um, in the college game. He had 13 in 2023. He had 13, um, had 848 yards. Two previous years, he had over 1,000 yards with his high career high in college football of 2021, where he had 1,354 yards. So definitely a guy that produces, that has produced consistently the last couple of years. Huge from him. Not really a guy that's participated in the rushing game. He's only got 100 yards, about 100 yards to his name there. So yeah, kind of an interesting guy, Jacob Cowing. I'll be very interested to see where he falls in the draft process. Um, I think, again, we're talking about a mid-round player, but as a mid-round player, can you are you a fifth round mid round player or are you a third round mid round player? That'll be interesting. Now the next guy on my list, Johnny Wilson, six foot seven. Well, let's see what he weighs in at. I think he'll be somewhere above the two forty. But this is a guy that's just it's crazy. He's probably going to be a tight end, a receiving vertical threat tight end um, over the course of his old you know future NFL career, but. He averaged 17.2 yards per catch. 17.2 yards per catch of 102 receptions that he had in college football for 1,757 yards. Only eight TDs, but definitely a guy, big play when you've got, he's pretty quick. So let's see what his 40 time is when he's six foot seven. He can run four five, your low four fives, and he's six foot seven, and he's 235 plus 40, 240 pounds. What a weapon this guy becomes. Um, that alone should get him into the first three rounds, but he's got to make sure he catches the, catches the football and he's got to have a really successful draft process to make sure he maximizes what teams are prepared to bet on him in terms of his athletic traits. But I'm keen to see him what the mismatches at the, at the senior bowl. This car is going to be you know, a weapon. And I think he's already started showing that through some of the drills. All right, the third guy, the third final guy on our list for today's show is... Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky um, plays in that same conference as the University of Texas El Paso. We've talked about two guys from there. 3,000 yards from him in his college career, 29 TDs. Kind of interesting there, average 11.7. But he's a small guy. He'll be about 5'10 to 5'11, to, you know, um, probably around the 200-pound mark. So a little bit more. I'm interested to see from him like route running. I'm interested to see how we can go in the slot. 
interested to see if they can use him in the sweet game. Really open to what this guy can bring. I've not seen much tape of this guy. It's just when I had a look at him, I heard read a couple of things online about him. I'm like, I'm keen to see this guy at Senior Bowl. So that's why I brought him on the list. Hope you guys are too. All right, now we'll move on to Theo Johnson, the tight end out of Penn State. Now, the Steelers have a tight end out of Penn State. And Pat Freeman is there. Theo Johnson, I had thought, would probably be drafted a bit higher than where I think he will be now based on his stats. Now, Pat Freemuth had, I think it was about 14 or 16 TDs in his college career. He had 1,100, I think it was 85 or 1,135 yards. Theo Johnson only has 938 yards. But he does average 12.2 per reception, so that's pretty good um, in terms of how they use the tight end. Definitely a difference maker. Four-year starter, so he's got the um, – or four-year player, so he's got the certain the, the performances on the board, the experience. Um, but when it comes to Theo Johnson, well, I kind of think with Pat Freeman, which after mid-second – this guy's probably late third, early fourth. Again, if this guy's a good steal at the right pick and he is in the fourth, maybe the Steelers go after it. Maybe the Steelers go after it. Because when it comes to tight end, they are Connor Haywood, Darnell, and Pat Freemuth. Pat Freemuth will be off contract after this year. So we may see an extension for him. But they need to get younger. They need another vertical guy there. Connor Haywood is kind of your fullback anyway. It also alleviates the pressure of needing... Another good wide receiver on the roster. Um, they're probably going to need another to get two or three in this offseason. But it also fits with Arthur Smith and the way he's used tight ends and guys like Jonas Smith to bring in another tight end that can receive the football. So blocking will be important for him too. I'm interested to see his height. I've seen him listed at 6'4". This sports reference has him at six foot six. Let's see what he tests him out, especially also the weight, which is important when it comes to blocking. And then we get to Kamani Vidal out of Troy. He's my only running back I'm going to talk about. I'm just keen to see him. I've seen a little bit of him, highlights of him on tape. Um, looked at his stats, but he's 5'8", 215-pound running back. Let's see if he tests at that size and weight as well. 4,000 yards in college. He got better every year from 500 yards all the way to 1,661 this last year for Troy. Um, 700 yards receiving game as well. Nothing to shirk out off 92 receptions, an average of 7.6. Only one um, receiving touchdown in his career, but he has 33, 33 um, rushing touchdowns. Pretty incredible. And a college average of 5.1. He averaged that in his first year, then he went 4.6, 4.9, before finishing this year with a 5.6. Um, pretty, pretty high number there, guys. Pretty high number, guys and gals. Um, so, yeah, really excited to see what Kamani Vidal can do. What he's, I know he's already started doing some things. He was the Sun Belt Offensive Player of the Year. I knew he'd got an award there that I wanted to share with you. So, really interested to see what he can bring as well through this draft process and starting at the Senior Bowl. He's a guy who's supposed to get carries towards the back end of that game. Um, but, yeah, there's 13 guys across linebackers, wide receiver. Um, we talked a little bit about oh, oh, receiver when you talk about Johnny Wilkinson, it's just tight end dice style receiver. Um, another linebacker to consider as well as James Williams, the safety I talked about in our DB show. He might be doing some things at linebacker as well in terms of how they scheme him or some of the drills that he does. Um, but again, yeah, now we've covered every position off the off the course of the four shows we've done leading in the senior bowl. I'm so excited for it. It's one of my favorite things of the draft process. Hope you are too, even just to see some of these names perform. And all we can say now is go Steelers. <laughs>